and you are back live with the crew we're not live but you know what i mean we're having a good time here i am back from vegas we had a amazing marvelous trip maybe you've seen a couple of the videos that i made uh with brants and i uh after coming back from that i really had a, a million different questions and I'm going to address a couple of those. I did a video right before I went to Vegas, and it was really, it was a, if I might say so myself, a great little video. Uh, there was a lot of content, and it was really good, and there was a lot of people commenting about how much they received from that video. The thing of it is, nobody watched it. I don't get it. That I don't get the whole algorithm thing. Uh, one video will get 20,000 views, and the next one will get 2,000, and I can't. Can't explain it. There is no explaining that. Um, so today, I'm just going to do a quick little brief uh, synopsis of what's going on in the bond market. I'm sure a lot of you already know. Don't change the channel. I just want to cover a few things. In a nutshell, the United States is insolvent. It uh, basically owes as much money as it creates. And when uh, that ca happens, you have to print money to pay your bills. This is uh, a situation of other countries are going to see that this is the end of a financial institution that is going to have to change. It's going to have to find a better way. It's going to have to find a new uh, toy to sell to the world. Everybody in the world, and I'm talking about even China and Russia, have adopted essentially this same system. It's a failing system. It always was a failing system since 1913. It was never going to succeed in the way that it was created. Having said all that, that's just the beginning of what I want to talk about. When you talk to, when you asked me questions last week, there was a lot of questions I, I talked about uh, Bitcoin and way, the way El Salvador was going to make a bond out of that. And the ETFs are in competition, tripping over each other and uh, whining and dining Mr. Burns Gensler uh, into <clears throat> getting their ETF granted for fear that the entire financial system that is left of the resemblance of what it is once was we'll all be heading to the bond market because of the bitcoin will be in the bond market not in the etf market and that's what their big concern is so that's why they want to rush these etfs that's the synopsis of last week and why it's all so important and significant today the financial institutions have no more rabbit out of the hat they don't know what to do about it they don't have a product so Bitcoin becomes the new bubble, if you will, on the face of the planet. So, so many of the questions that I had about that video last week that I just surmised, what is, well, what does that mean to Ripple? What does that mean to XRP? First of all, I'd like to say really good news. I had a talk with Elizabeth, my wife, the attorney who's followed that case a long way. This essentially means that it, for the next couple of years, they're just going to have to go after uh, Brad Garlinghouse and uh, that side of the lawsuit before they can actually ever try to appeal again for the XRP side of the ruling with Ms. Torres last week or six months ago. You and I understand what we own. You and I, that's why you've asked me so many XRP questions. How does that relate to what's going on in El Salvador? I'm going to really confuse you and I'm going to tell you it's not related only currently right at this moment. Please stick with me. This is very important that you understand what I'm about to say. <clears throat> Bitcoin is an asset. It is essentially gold. It's a collateralized. Governments are now becoming more and more. This is what I talk about in my Patreon channel. I can talk more freely there, obviously. The governments are becoming more and more centralized. Okay? They're becoming more nationalized. China wants to keep all their gold. Russia wants to keep all their gold. Um, U.S. is trying to 
keep its business model. That's not working well, but they are selling all of their gold, which is interesting. But the, the nationalism of all the different countries for their sovereign strength tells you and I that they expect tough times ahead, but it's a beautiful thing if you ask me, and this is one of the things I talked about a lot over the Silver Symposium in Vegas because I was there talking to a lot of macro-minded people. I think it's beautiful because this tells me the Davos group, if you will, are losing power. They simply are not as involved globally. They're losing power these individual countries are going about it without them. Now, can't prove that. It just seems to be the writing on the wall that I'm seeing, and I hope you guys are seeing the same. That energy is moving away from that uh, regime, uh, if you will. Their control over the world never was about industrial strength. It never was about commodity strength. It never was about really producing real things. It was always about controlling people through media, through what telling you how great they were, telling you how important they are to the world, telling you what a great power or benevolent people they were when they never really were. Bouncing around a little bit here, but where I want to get to this is very important. You and I have three, and I know this is going to be quite a controversial statement, and I, hang in there with me. There are essentially three cryptos now. I'm going to call it three. There is, in my opinion, of importance, there are the top three, okay? And they are, I'm just going to put them all in the one group here. And that is XRP, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. They have all been given the green light for different reasons, different controversies behind all those different reasons, but they've been given a green light. So when you asked me all those questions last week, well, Alan, how does this relate to my coin XRP? How does this uh, happen with Cardano or, or XLM? Why, why are you only talking in a bond or ETF manner about Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the perfect bond and perfect ETF coin. Now, why? In particular, with XRP, what XRP is great at is the market, the moving of coins, the moving of wealth. Movement from place to place to place is its ability to overseas banking is the transactional side of the internet banking system. This is really big. Think about this. Would you rather be the network that everything moves on or the thing that is being moved on the, the massive network? In my opinion, XRP is the best at being the network in which it all moves upon. Bitcoin will be the asset collateralized governments are obtaining and hanging on to Bitcoin right now. I don't know if you saw a recent chart, the United States is the number two or three holder, number three holder of all Bitcoin. China is number five of the largest whale wallet accounts is China. And Russia is up in the top 10. They're obtaining and holding, again, like I was talking about, on a national level for national sovereignty. They're hanging on to their commodities, the labor of their people, and they're using Bitcoin currently as a commodity, like digitalized gold. Digitized gold. I'm not going to get into Ethereum right now. I'm not really a huge fan of the project. And I think if you watch my show, you understand a lot of the reasons why I don't like it. Doesn't mean that it isn't going to have a successful future. It probably is. Now I want to get into what all the questions were about XRP. Will XRP be a bond or an ETF? I don't believe it's going to be either. I'm one man. If you watch my 
shows that I do in the first week of January, every year you will see all the things I got wrong during the year. There are plenty. In 2023, I'm going to say I'm not even that close to 25% accurate in my predictions this year. Usually I'm pretty 30, 40%. This year, holy smokes, I got them all wrong. Yeah, yeah, not all of them, but a lot wrong about what I thought was going to happen. So, do I think that XRP is going to be a, a, a security? No, we already know that's not the case. Do I think it's going to be a bond? No, I don't. Do I think it's going to be an ETF? No, I don't. Do I think it's going to be the future of MasterCard and such global transactions on a high-level banking system? Yes, I do. Do you, again, let's talk about what Reggie Middleton talks about all the time. Do you want to be the network that everything moves on? Or do you want to be, you know, the Amazon box that moved on the network? You want to be the network. This is huge if you own XRP. People, I'm telling you, it's key. You are the network. You are the movement. You are the secured and guaranteed transactions and the liquidity of those transactions. That's where you come in. You're huge. Do I think it's possible that it could be a bond one day? Yes. I happen to know people. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've actually talked to people that have talked to them in the same room discussing XRP being a bond. That has been discussed. It will be discussed again in the future. Does that mean that that's where it's headed? I don't believe so. The reason why, and I'm going to ask, uh, answer your question, is because you need a return. I think you need a return in the world in which we live in today, especially with interest rates right now, where you have a T-bill, you can get five and a half percent. Short-term paper is going to give you five and a half percent on your money right now. What are you going to do? You're going to need at least that to hold a bond of XRP. You're probably not going to get that. I'm talking about staking returns here now. Something like Ethereum probably could be bonded because I think it's going, it's returning currently somewhere around 8%. I like another coin that's Divi and that's way into the 10 and 15% uh, returns. That could be a bond one day. I think you need the high coupon yield, okay, payment back percentage by the end of the year to become a good bond product, shall we say. I hope you understand where I'm going with this. I hope you get what it means on a global basis because we're getting to crunch time, guys. This is getting wild. The end of 2023 is going to be a sight to see. 2024 is setting up, in my opinion, to be the best year for crypto. It's setting up that way to me. It's because people are trying to draw in assets to their countries. And when you see a U.S. and you see China and Russia are obtaining Bitcoin, I'm not just talking about Bitcoin. They're going to obtain the three I just talked about because the BIS and the ECB and all these people are talking about, I want those collateralized assets so that we're a legitimate player going forward at the table of discussion when we go less globalist and more nationalist. And each country will have to represent itself, not just with its people and its labor and its assets that come out of the ground. You will need assets that are now the future of digital assets. Okay, that you and I know are of true value. And I just gave you the top three, in my opinion. Those are the three that people are going to say, those are the global standard that we, this one's got a ruling, this one's legal everywhere in the world, this one is just accepted as the digital gold, and this one is the transactional gold of the planet. All of that is so key in where we're headed. So, all three of those coins have very bright futures because their application. I know there's a million things wrong with all three of them. I know there's a million things right with all three of them. And it's just one 
man's opinion. With that, I think I'm going to be with the crow and get out. And I will see you in the next video very soon. Thanks for being with me. So, I've got a bit of a serious moment here. No, really. Really, I, I, can, I can get serious. I met a man and his son. I don't have permission to use their name. In Vegas over the weekend. They thought they were dealing with an exchange. They lost thousands of dollars in coins, people. Thousands. They seemed normal. They spoke perfect English. That's an English company, English-speaking company. Everything about this company sounded legit. Everything except for one digit was correct. Understand, you don't have to move anything. You don't have to fix anything in your wallets or in your accounts ever, immediately this moment. Give it a rest, look into it. Figure out if they're legitimate. Take your time. Don't ever assume well, they told me this about my account. They told me this about my account. They knew everything about my account, so I just gave them the rest of it. No. These people are getting good at their scam, and I'm not going to say that they are, may or may not be affiliated with three-letter agencies. That's right. Love you guys. See you soon.